So I've stopped making fish and chips at home, and that's because a pub can do a much better job than I can. They have that specialized equipment, the fryer with two baskets, so you can fry fish and chips at the same time and serve them nice and hot. But at home, usually one gets cold while it's waiting on the other, but Ashley's here. She's gonna show us how we can have it all hot fish and crisp chips all at the same time. All at the same time. All right. As you said, I mean, you know, when you're driving home from work, you're not usually thinking, oh, tonight I'm gonna whip up a little no. batch of fish and chips. It's not a last minute dinner. No, it's not. But after I've showed you how easy this recipe is, you will be starting to think like that on your <laughs> okay. way home. So let's get started with the batter. Here we have one cup of all-purpose flour, and here is one cup of cornstarch. Now the combination of these two things gave us the color and the texture of the batter we were looking for. It's really nice and light and mm -hmm. beautiful golden brown. And for a little seasoning, we have one and a half teaspoons of salt. And for lift, we have one teaspoon of baking powder. So let's add a little beer to this batter. This is a light bodied American lager and I have one and a half cups of it. Now the beer does a few different things for us in this batter. It provides some seasoning here. It provides a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. It provides some acidity, which is always welcome with some fried food. And also if you don't cook with beer or alcohol, no fear, you can use simple seltzer water. Plain water doesn't do the trick, unfortunately. So it's more the carbonation is essential but the beer adds additional flavor exactly. and benefit. <laughs> I'm gonna whisk this until nice and smooth. I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap. And before I do anything with this, let's move on down to the fish. Sounds good. Okay, so here we are gonna be using some cod fish, but if you can't find any cod, halibut or haddock will also do. We have two pound skinless filet of cod, which I've cut into two pieces. I'm gonna cut this into eight pieces, and I want them to be about four ounces each. So first, cut these in half like that, and then I'll cut this right down the middle. Cut the fish into even sized pieces. Everything's gonna cook at the same rate. Before I season it with salt and pepper, I'm gonna pat these dry with some paper towels so that the seasoning adheres nicely. Season it nicely with some salt and pepper. And if you season it from up high, it really distributes nicely over any protein that you're working with. Transfer the seasoned fish to a nice large plate. I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we're gonna put that batter and the fish into the refrigerator. Okay. All right, so we have got the fish covered for our fish and chips. Now let's move on to the chips. For the potatoes, I chose Yukon Gold Potatoes because of their moderate starch level. So first, when you're working with any type of round vegetable, it's always best to flatten all of the sides. And you can do so by trimming one quarter inch off of each rounded side. Now that I have all those rounded pieces squared off, I'm gonna cut this into quarter inch thick planks. So using my trusty ruler here, now I have a good idea of what a quarter inch looks like, so I'll continue to work my way through the potato. I would recommend that you stack just one on top of another. Just start with about two at this stage. Two level stack. I'm gonna cut these into a quarter inch thick fries. Well, Ashley mentioned a minute ago that she chose Yukon Golds because they were a medium starch potato. Now, the reason that russets were out of the game here is that they are very starchy. And the rule of thumb is the more starchy the potato is, the more apt it is to become super tender and fall apart. We want sturdy but still tender chips here, so that's why Yukon Golds were the perfect choice for us. Let's get frying. All right. Okay. Here we are going to do what's called a cold fry method. So if you notice, a lot of times when you cut potatoes, you put them in water mm -hmm. to keep them from oxidizing and changing color. Now I didn't do that with this. I want the starches to stay in the potatoes. Okay. I'm gonna add these potatoes to the cold peanut oil. This is peanut oil. I have eight cups total here. Put these over high heat and I'm not going to touch anything in here. It's gonna take about seven minutes to get to a rolling boil. And then I'm gonna cook it at that boil for an additional 15 minutes. The potatoes after that are going to be a little limp and the exteriors will be beginning to firm. Now it's been seven minutes and this is what I meant for the rolling boil. That's boiling. That's boiling. So again, I'm not going to touch these potatoes and I'm gonna to continue to cook them at this high level heat for an additional 15 minutes. Okay, 
22 minutes total has passed. Now I'm going to go in using these tongs and just give a gentle stir just to prevent any of these from sticking together, especially the bottom of the pot because some do tend to stick there. I'm going to continue to boil these for four minutes until they are just golden brown. All right. Those oh, chips look right nice. They sure <laughs> do. Okay, so I'm gonna use this spider here, but a slotted spoon also does the trick. Oh, those are beautiful. Now, normally when French fries or any other kind of fried type of food comes out of something like the oil, my first instinct is to season it with salt. But these are not completely done at this point. Just get any large pieces that were a little stubborn and wanted to stay behind out of there. Now that looks Great, I'm gonna set this aside. Let's batter the fish. Now, I'm gonna add all of it together. Just make sure everything is covered here. All right, now before I do anything, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Sounds good. All right, so I am gonna check my oil temperature here. Now I need it to come back to 375 degrees before I add the fish. All right, time to get frying. Now I'm gonna do two batches here. And using this fork. That's a beautiful thick batter. Really thickened up nicely in mm -hmm. the fridge. I'm gonna drag it across the oil, drop it in. Drag it across the oil. And what that does is it really seals the batter in nicely so you're not gonna have a lot of raggedy edges. Now it was important for Ashley to bring that oil temperature back up to 375. If she cooked the fish at a lower temperature, the outside, well, it would have been nice and darkly colored, but the inside of the fish would still be underdone. So 375 is key. That's key. So I'm gonna monitor the temperature of the oil, and I wanna make sure that they're between 350 and 375 okay. degrees. And I'm gonna cook this for four minutes on each side, eight minutes total. All right, the second batch is ready to come <laughs> out of that oil. Oh, oh yeah. Super, super crispy, beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, I love really good pub fish and chips. I have yet to see fish and chips as good as these. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit this fish with a little bit of salt. Season it now. Season yep. it now. I'm gonna bring the oil temperature back up to 375 degrees, and we are almost done. All we need to do is just simply reheat those french fries. Usually, I would tell you to reuse the cooking oil after you're done with our fish and chips recipe. But in this case, no, you do want to get rid of it. Once you cook fish in oil, it really gives off its flavor. So if you go to make donuts in there, well, you're going to get fish-flavored donuts. Fish donuts. Mmm. <laughs> well, that didn't take long at all for the oil to come back up to temp. Not at all. All right. All right, give this a little stir. And one minute. See you guys soon. Okay, that was a long minute. <laughs> wow. That was a literal minute, I have to say. These look beautiful. Oh, man. Let me check on that fish. How's it uh, doing? Still hot. Ooh, good. That's great. I'm gonna season them with a little bit of salt. May I? Please do. Okay. I'm so excited for this. My <laughs> mouth is watering. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Here we have some homemade tartar sauce. And you can get our recipe for our tartar sauce on our website, cookscountry.com. I love a little lemon. It's super crispy. Mm. That batter is so light. So light. And flaky, but it still has some hep to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not one of these batters that you make it so light. It's just this gossamer thin, almost a veneer. We wanted a little bit more structure there, yes. and you gave it to us. And the baking powder, if you could see, mm. really helped provide a little bit of lift in there. I'm putting the fork and knife down Yeah. to go in for the chips. Oh, right. They're actually kind of creamy inside, mm. really nice shell on the outside, perfectly cooked through. Mm. Gorgeous color. Excellent job. Thank you. Make an ultra light batter with flour, cornstarch, baking powder, and beer, and season large pieces of cod with salt and pepper. For the chips, start Yukon Gold potatoes and cold peanut oil, and cook until just shy of done. Remove the chips, then batter and fry the fish until deep brown. Return the chips to the oil for one minute to brown and crisp and serve all with lemon and tartar sauce. It can be done. So from Cook's Country, pour a pint for yourself and enjoy fish and chips with a wee chippy. Oh, right back at ya. <laughs> Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? 
Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>